All right, so I'm just going to kind of dive in here. You can see my my little uh, pure ref thing or whatever it's called on this side, and I've got my substance painter over here. So we should be more or less good to go. You know, you you would definitely probably want to have just like a dual monitor setup. Let's see, I don't probably need. So I've got my layers, texture set settings. I don't really need this either because I've already done my bakes for this. I don't need the Python console. So I'm just going to clean up my UI a little bit. This is fine. Don't need texture set list. So we've got my layers over here, my properties and my shelf. And that should be sufficient. Obviously, if I need to open up another window, I can just go window views and everything is going to be right there. And if for some reason you see uh, 2D and 3D, you can click this little icon right here. Select whichever one you need. And if your yours may look a little different depending on what the uh, what the the designers of Substance Painter have, have uh, decided to do regarding the UI, but um, yeah, should look more or less like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is just grab some kind of generic metal. So not necessarily any of this wear or grime or anything. Just like a, what will the under like the base layer of metal look like? It's probably a little bit too blue. I think that might be just a result of the camera. That's too rusty, so I'm just going to find some kind of generic thing. Something like that's probably all right. Even though that, that has been painted, it's uh, it still looks reasonably good. So you can always go, I'm going to just expand this up. You can go to your Smart Materials, and Substance Painter has a ton of probably pretty good ones in here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just try to cobble something together so you can see the process of what happens if you just try to make your layers from scratch, or your materials from scratch. So we're going to come over here and do a fill layer by clicking on this little paint bucket there. And then I'm going to turn the metallic all the way up. And you can see we already got something that looks fairly metallic. And then I'm going to leave the roughness more or less where it is. You don't want it super shiny or super dull. You can see what happens if I reduce the roughness. We get this mirror finish. We see the background. Uh, if it starts to go too broad, it's it's still feels certainly metallic, and that that actually may okay, but it may be okay, but too much further than that, it's 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 uh, probably not ideal. So something like that, that's probably okay. And then let's see, we'll go ahead. I'm going to make a folder here, and I'm going to call it base metal. It's always a good idea to keep these things somewhat organized. And you can see there's like some little baking errors in here. I'm not sure what's going on with that, but uh, it may be something that we can address. You know, there may be something we can do, but my guess is it's probably just a, a feature of the, the hard surface geometry that we're just inheriting some of that uh, triangulation there. It could also be in a low poly, which would be kind of interesting. But anyway, yeah, I think it is actually in the low poly. So again, one of the nice things, I'm not sure if I mentioned this or not, but I, I hope I did. Nice things about this is we can get this entire asset pretty much finished and go back and change our mind about the UVs. And so long as we don't change the scale, we could even make little changes to the geometry and it'll all just reapply. Every brush stroke that you've done remembers that remembers where the camera is and where the where the what the mouse pattern is. So it can basically rebuild your entire process. Um, and in fact, you can create a smart material and re reapply that same stuff to other models if you want. But anyway, the point is, even though I'm seeing a baking error right there, I'm not really going to worry about it right this minute. It might not, might not even be that noticeable once I begin adding more stuff to it. So I'm going to grab the color here. Maybe we make the color a little bit darker. And now I'm going to throw a new fill layer on. And I'm going to call this one dirt. And typically you would put the dirt on top of everything. But I, th I think if, I, if I'm gonna have something kind of like the paint scratch through, I kind of want there to be just some general crap in there. So the dirt's not gonna have any metalness at all. I'm gonna make it kind of dark, something like this. And then I'm going to throw, I'm gonna cheat a little bit here and throw one of these smart masks on there. We can just sort of do some experimentation. So we have smart masks. And we've got dirt cavities, sure, why not? So we can just drag that up directly into our layers. And if everything goes according to plan, you'll see the process here. What we end up with is like a little bit of dirt just in the places where 
painter has determined that there are crevices, which is actually just fine. Um, it might be a little bit too clean out here, so we have a trick for that. And also, I, I want to modify it so that it's uh, a little bit flatter in the specularity. It's kind of hard to get the light exactly right in there. But I'll show you what I'm talking about. So right now, the roughness is fairly low. If we go a little bit higher with it, you'll see it starts to feel a little bit more like grime. The opacity might be a little bit much. So it's important to note that when you're messing with the opacity on the layer, you're actually only affecting the opacity of, in this case, the base color. So like if I wanted to change the opacity of the metalness or the roughness, I would need to hop over there. So I'm not necessarily going to play with the opacity here. I'm going to hold uh, Alt and click on the mask. And we can see what the end result of that mask is using our little our base dirt cavities. So what I want to do is add a little bit of some irregularity to it. And the way that I'm going to do that, in fact, I think I'll leave it on the mask view. Again, that's just Alt and then you click on the mask. Is I'm going to right click and add a fill inside the mask, not the actual uh, fill layer, but the mask for the fill layer. And then come over to oh, grunges maybe. And I'm looking for something that's going to be either mostly white or mostly black. That's probably perfect. And then you can just uh, click it and drag it up to the grayscale area. So this is our properties. So I have the fill selected, which activates its properties over here. And then I can just drag the grunge that I'm interested in up to there. And then I can set my blend mode to something like add. So if I turn this off and on, you can see I've just taken this grunge and basically applied it all over my model. And now it's feeling a lot less procedural, but that might be a little bit too much. We can come over here and I'm gonna make a little bit of a modification to it. I'm gonna scale it so that we're getting uh, two tiles in UNV so that it's just a little bit finer. And then this this metalness, maybe. Yeah, I kind of do want it to be metal. It's like, this is definitely painted, so it's not going to have the exact same thing. I was mostly just kind of looking at the the frequency and kind of noise that's giving the surface that uh, particular look and feel. And I'm going to come back over to my dirt layer. So we've got the roughness, metalness. Let's see. kind of wanted a little darker than that, I guess. Did I mess with the opacity anywhere? So I think it might just be kind of how it's interacting with the, um, like breaking up the metalness of the surface underneath it. That's actually, that's actually fine. Again, one of the nice things about, about Painter is super flexible, right? It's like as we add more things to our layer stack, we can always go back and just modify things. And if things are nicely organized, that process is fairly easy. All right, so I'm going to stop the video now and we will pick it up in the next one.